Hello and greetings from Singapore. My name is Dr. Anthony Yi, and I'm very honoured to be asked to deliver today's keynote address for this conference. I'm an engineer as well as an academic. So I have one leg in industry and one leg in teaching and research. My area of research is in energy and sustainability. The specificity of my research will be very boring to this audience. So I will share with you the broader aspects of my work and its impact on the environment. I have attended many conferences and heard many keynote addresses. The ones that I find most interesting are those that seek to inform and also to give food for thought and reflection. So I will endeavour to deliver the same today. For the first part, I will seek to inform and for the second part, I will share with you an experiment that I did with my students some time ago and I will leave you to draw your own conclusions. So for the first part, I have seen a lot of um, devices or schemes that claim to save you electricity. And for the most part, they are all scams. Let me share with you one such instance. So this is a device that I bought online that claims to save me 99% of my electricity bills. And of course, when you hear a claim like that, that, oh, this device is uh, uh, feared by all power industries, um, generating industries in the world because uh, they will lose money because the consumers will save 99% of the electricity bills. When you hear a claim like that, it screams a scam. Okay. So why did I buy it? Well, the reason why I bought it, because my good friend, Dr. Deepak Waika, another electrical engineer like myself, one day sent me an advertisement about this device and asked me what I thought about it. So I called him back. I said, Deepak, you're kidding me, right? We, we've been in, it, in, the, in this industry for 40 over years. We have seen all these sort of things, making these sort of claims. It's just, just another one. Just ignore it. But this time was a bit different. <clears throat> I decided to test it out. So I actually went online and I bought three of these. So let me share with you uh, um, what its, uh, its claims are. It claims to save, first of all, 99% of my um, electricity bills. And uh, its claim was that it's been invented by a group of scientists and researchers and engineers from a UK, sorry, from an American university, and they even have pictures of these guys. So let me uh, bring you, so I opened the box, I bought it, I opened the box, and uh, this thingy was inside, and there was, of course, the instruction manual, if you like, a leaflet, okay. Um, it's too small, so I've blown it up over here, and let me share it with you. Okay, so you will remember that uh, I told you that uh, the, one of the claims was that this device was invented by a group of American uh, university scientists and researchers. Uh, they've even got a picture of that group uh, in the advertisement material, and this was the uh, instruction that came with it. So it's too small to be seen, so I've blown it up for you. So says here, product introduction, our honourable customers, we are grateful to you for buying and using the electricity saved box. We are sure our product will bring many conveniences and comfort to your life. We cannot tolerate electrical power resources being wasted without resources, without results from the economical beginning of a little after a period of time. 
saving electricity means saving money. Saving money means earning money. And then it says, Joyces, I have no idea what Joyces are, will surge forward from your heart and do not forget the electric safe box brings you happiness. Does this sound like English from an American university? Obviously not. This is probably something from, from, from China. Okay, let me show you something else. So, how, <coughs> how does it save electricity? Um, I really don't want to go into the uh, engineering details, but I'll just explain to you what it means. Our electricity is, whether it's in the States or anywhere else in the uh, UK or Singapore, it is a nice sinusoidal curve. So it claims that in your house, there are spikes in the uh, sine waveform, and after installing, it's pure, there are no spikes. So I say, really, guys? Then, there's another one that says, before installing, there are a lot of um, uh, what we call electrical noises. And once you install it, ooh, the noises disappear. So you save money. And then it says here, notice, when using, please be careful when plugging into the sockets. Don't be too rude. <laughs> you want to be rude to this device? So obviously, uh, uh, when, you can, when you see this, it's nonsense. Okay, so let me come back to the um, continue. So I bought this device knowing full well that's a scam. But the reason why I bought it was because I just wanted to do, test it out to see whether or not the claims are true. So how do I do that? I went to the lab, I borrowed an oscilloscope, brought it home, and I tested the waveform from my home to see whether or not it is a very nice sine waveform or whether there are spikes in it. And of course, I know, any power utility in any part of the world has to ensure a very nice, smooth, soiling solar curve without any of these spikes. So, true enough, the oscilloscope readout tells me that the power quality in my home, supplied by the uh, utility grid, is smooth. So, there are no spikes. What about... Uh, the other claim that uh, there will be a lot of electrical noises. So to test that, I put the oscilloscope on for like about a month to see whether or not there are actually um, uh, electrical uh, noises. And yes, of course there are, but once in a while. Right? It's not, it doesn't last very long. In electrical engineering, we call it a transient, it's very short, it's not going to make any difference. So, does this work? Of course not. Um, and uh, so, <coughs> as to the claims whether or not I can save on my electricity bills, uh, in Singapore, we get the utility bills reading for the last for every six months. So in other words, I can see what I've paid over the last six months. And if the claims are true, that it will shave 99% of my electricity bills, then even if it's half, I'll be very happy. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't change. Okay. So I decided then to take it apart and see what's inside. Now let me just share something with you. So it says here, you can see here, there's a label. It says, electricity saving box. Intelligent energy saver. Let me peel this out and show you what's inside. It's hose. All right. This device was advertised on another website claiming to be an insect repellent. You plug it in, you'll chase all the mosquitoes away. So... By using the same device, 
that putting this label on, it claims to be an energy saver. Of course, it's nonsense. But people are buying this online. So, um, if you come across something like this, uh, don't fall for it. If it tells you that it will shave, it will save you 99, you cut 99% of the electricity bills. <laughs> it's, of course, it sounds too good to be true, right? So, uh, but yeah, so some people get taken in. Um, and here's a, a last footnote on part one. Not only does it not save me money, it costs me money. Because there's a little LED light here, okay? And it requires energy to light this thing up. So when you plug it in, it turns, it lights up, the LED lights up, and you think, oh, great, it's working, you know, my electricity bill will be uh, reduced by 99%. But the reality is you are adding to your electricity bill because it, it needs to power up this little LED. So, <clears throat> please, when you uh, see something online um, that claims really too good to be true, uh, chances are that it is too good to be true. So, the first part, don't uh, um, uh, fall for such things. Do your research. Uh, go and look at Google. Uh, Google the product and uh, surely it will tell you uh, whether it's a scam or not. Okay, so now we come to part two. I've been struggling with the second part where it's supposed to be uh, um, reflective uh, and, and it, it will cause you to reflect and think. Um, initially, I had planned on something and uh, I struggled with it. The reason is because this experiment that I did with my students they were really traumatized by the experiment at the end of the experiment. So I was struggling, and I never did the experiment anymore. I only did it once. So I was struggling whether or not to, to share this at this conference. And I had an alternative topic, which is um, the latest energy, uh, which will really blow away your wind, your solar, your geothermal, everything. It will really blow it away. And that is fusion. Um, and there's a, a group uh, in Oxfordshire, UK, called the Joint European Taurus, or JET, G-E-T for short. And they had actually produced, made and produced a fusion reactor. And now there's a bigger unit. Uh, they've scaled it up in the south of France. So that was supposed to be the second part of my uh, address. But I felt that um, I think I should um, do the first one, the experiment. Because two weeks ago, I saw two Net Geo documentaries which supported and corroborates the results of the experiment. That made me change my mind. So I'll share with you the experiment that I did with my students and then I will uh, describe it to you then I would leave it to you to draw your own conclusions. So let me start with a preamble. When I started doing energy studies uh, and climate change in 1993, there were 6.7 billion people on planet Earth. And if you think about it, that is from the start of humankind. Right up to 1993, we had 6.7 billion people. And research, modeling, um, really scientific fact tells us that our planet, and I mean even if it's common sense, our planet has got finite resources. Right? Just like climate change, right? we have got finite resources. The planet can sustain 7 billion people. Now, think about it. 1993, 6.7 billion people. Uh, the planet can sustain 7 billion. I just googled the Earth's population two days ago. 
and it is now close to 7.9 billion. Just imagine, in 30 years, the population has grown by 1.2 billion. It has exceeded, if you like, the safety limit that our Earth can really sustain. So what was my experiment? We decided to test this hypothesis, whether or not it's true that if you keep on expanding the population on planet Earth, bad things are going to happen. So what we did was, we bought a tank of goldfish and we fed the fish, not too many fishes. Fishes were very happy, swimming around, right? Then we started to increase the number of goldfishes. And of course, we test the water to make sure that the water is okay for to sustain the, the fish's life. So it's just like our planet. We have our atmosphere that we breathe, uh, um, our climate change, the temperature, right? If you get too hot, then yeah, bad things are going to happen. So same thing. We monitored the uh, water quality. And of course, we have filters that filter the water to ensure that the quality of the water is really good for sustaining life in the tank. So we added more fishes, and then we found that the water quality became bad. And of course, it's true, right? You have got more uh, um, uh, fishes in there, there's more discharge, um, there's more waste, and that takes a toll on the quality of the water. So what did we do? We decided to put in plants inside the water. So the plants in the water acts like the plant right on planet Earth. It draws away the carbon dioxide, it cleans the waste, and the quality of the water improved. It went back to normal. Then we added more fishes. Now it's getting a bit crowded. So even if we put in more uh, um, plants and put in more aerators to pump in oxygen, the quality of the water still came down. So what did we do? We increased the filtration, made the filtration bigger. Again, the quality of the water went back. And that was not enough. We decided to load it, more fishes. Again, this time there are really a lot of fishes in there and they started fighting. The fishes started fighting. Whereas when they were in the, in the natural uh, uh, size, uh, when there's less fishes around, they were pretty happy. Now that it's overcrowded, the bigger ones are attacking the smaller ones. We see dead fishes. Fishes are more, fishes die. So we didn't stop there, we keep on adding. And when we added more fishes, we could not add any more plants. There's only so much oxygen that we could pump in. There's only so much filtration that we could do. And the water of the quality then became worse and worse. Fishes fought. Eventually, most of them died. Very few left. A lot of fishes floating. So of course, that was very uh, traumatic for my students. Although we kind of expected these results, we did not expect two things. It to be so drastic and for it to happen so quickly. I have said before that I will share the results of this experiment. I will not make um, any comments about it. Except to say that uh, in 2011, there's this polymath called Max Singer, he wrote a book, sorry, he wrote a paper called The History of the Future, in which he says that, don't worry, even the population of the earth reaches a certain amount, um, fertility rate will drop, things will happen to make, and, and, and uh, maybe uh, viruses will come in, uh, wars, uh, more competition for space leading to conflicts. Uh, and that will maintain the 
the balance right, that, that, that the earth can sustain. I don't think that's true. I really don't think that's true. But in the meantime, what are we doing? We are looking at ways to live in the ocean. We are building our buildings taller so that we have space for uh, population growth. We are digging into the earth for transportation so that roads are uh, underground, services, electricity lines, everything underground, sewerage underground, and uh, people also eventually will try and live underground. So we are trying to find more spaces on this finite planet where we build up, we try and live in the ocean and underground. But uh, I just want to then quote the late Stephen Hawking before he died. And he said, for humankind to continue to survive, humans must leave this planet. In other words, what he's saying is, if the bull cannot sustain anymore, buy another bull. Don't put all the fishes in the bowl. Take some of them and put it in the new bowl. So, uh, with that, I would like to conclude my address today. I wish you a good conference. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.